Okay, so today we're going to talk about the freewheeling units that are found on this transmission and every helicopter uh, that's designed. The freewheeling unit is necessity. So if the engine were to quit, we want to make sure that the main rotor continues to turn for auto rotation purposes, but we don't want the drag or the failure of the engine to, um, to cause the RPM to drop significantly. We need a way for the engine to drive the transmission and so that the transmission cannot drive the engine. All right, we need a disconnect. So this is the freewheeling unit here. And there's two of them on this transmission because this transmission is designed for a two twin engine aircraft. This here is the output for the tail rotor and this is where the mast would normally be located. Okay, so this transmission's from a Bell 205, 204, 212. Um, we're gonna have the input from the engine here, and the output will be from, through the mast and out through to the tail rotor here. So think of the freewheeling unit like your bicycle. So with your bicycle, you can pedal, and you're gonna turn the rear wheel, but as soon as you hit that hill, and you start to build some speed, you don't want your rear wheel to spin your pedals. You want to be able to stop pedaling, all right, and just concentrate on going down the hill. Same thing happens here. We want the engine to drive the transmission, but we don't want the transmission to try to drive a dead engine. So this is a close-up of the freewheeling unit, and as I rotate it here, you can see that as I turn it, so this is to simulate that the engine is driving the transmission, you can see that the tail rotor is turning here, so the output to the tail rotor is turning, and the output to the main rotor would be turning as well. But if the engine were to quit, we would want the main rotor to be able to continue to turn. So if I was just to keep turning this, if the engine were to quit, notice that the tail rotor could continue to turn and the main rotor could continue to turn, but the freewheeling unit would disconnect the engine. So this flange isn't going to move because the freewheeling unit is located right here. So driving, and then if I rotate in the opposite direction, of course, there is a disconnect there. Same thing happens with this side over here. Driving, you notice the other engine is not going to be driving because we don't want this engine to have an output to the other, en the, the other engine. We want both engine outputs to the transmission. So we're simulating right now that the engine on the right-hand side the number two engine has failed. The number one engine is still working, still driving the tail rotor, still driving the mast, or not driving the input on the other engine. Okay, engine input here, tail rotor down below, main rotor mast. Engine is driving the main rotor mast and tail rotor output, but if the engine were to quit, the freewheeling unit is located right here, will disconnect the input flange from the transmission itself, so that you can see there, when I turn the tail rotor, the mast is spinning, everything's spinning inside the transmission except the output to the engine will be disconnected. So this freewheeling unit is from a Bell 206. Bell 206s are, work a little bit differently where the freewheeling unit is located inside the engine. Even though this freewheeling unit is installed in the engine on the Jet Ranger and normally in the transmission on most other aircraft, it still needs to be supplied with transmission oil because if the engine quits, we want to maintain lubrication in the freewheeling unit. So lubrication will still be coming from the transmission. Engine output on these splines, which are going to drive this shaft, this shaft will drive the output shaft. So they call this the outer shaft and the output shaft. So I'm going to apply a force right here on these splines and you can see that the sh output shaft wants to rotate. But what happens if I want to keep rotating, in this case I want the main rotor to continue to rotate, but I need to disconnect from the engine. Notice that the output is allowed to continue to turn, but the input will be stationary. So that would be simulating an engine failure or an engine seizing, we want the main rotor to continue to spin. So let's take this apart. So you just slide it off ever so gently, 
expose the shaft. And I'll lay that down. So there's the output shaft. There's the outer shaft here. And inside we have sprags. You can see all those sprags here. In one direction they're going to stand up. In the other direction they're going to lay down. They're all spring loaded. And they take up that gap that's in between the outer shaft and the output shaft. So that space there, it's very important that these sprags be of a, a certain dimension. So even an aircraft that auto-rotates often, like a training aircraft, these will wear out quicker than uh, a typical normal utility aircraft. And that's because they're performing so many auto-rotations. So when as they're slipping, they'll begin to wear down the sprags. There's the sprag unit there. The sprag unit consists of many sprags. They have to be in the correct orientation for them to operate. And you can easily tell if when you're assembling one of these after maintenance that you have one in, in the wrong direction. So you can see that they want to lay down or stand up. Laying down is going to create a smaller overall diameter and it will allow for slippage of the two shafts. But when they're standing up, they look like they wedge themselves into place. They take up the gap and then you create uh, one shaft that can drive the other. We can just try it drop those in here ever so gently, get them in the right position and they should fall right in. That's too, there it goes. And they drop into place. That goes inside. And there we go. Driving, freewheeling.